So obviously the first, the first season of the Ultimate Fighter with two female coaches, with uh, women and men living in the house together. And the, I guess the best way I could describe this season, first of all, it's always about, you know, as far as the reality goes and what goes on in the house, I don't know much about that, like I say, every season. I, I watch that when you do. Um, I can tell you this. Both these women were awesome coaches. Um, the fights were amazing. I was very happy with the talent that we had this season. And uh, Eric Shanks, the president of Fox Sports, said to me the other day, he's, at, he's up to episode four. He thinks it's the best season we've ever done. And he's very critical of, of The Ultimate Fighter. He had a lot, of, uh, a lot of production changes he wanted to make, and uh, he thinks it's the best season we've ever done. So for what it's worth, he's the man, and he would know. Rhonda, what did you, you think about this season? <laughs> um, I think it was very good for the women's division. And um, I, I think that it definitely needed to happen, but you couldn't pay me $10 million to do it again. <laughs> How about you? I thought it was a great season. You know, I learned a lot about myself and, um, you know, the young fighters that are coming up in Hungary. And... Uh, their passion really kind of re-inspired me, so um, I was really glad I got to be a part of it. And um, I'm, I'm nervous about it a little bit, about watching this first episode to see, you know, what, what comes of it. But I'm, I'm really actually really excited, too. It's always weird watching yourself on TV, especially if you've never done something like The Ultimate Fighter. And especially when it's uh, an emotional season, the way it was with, with these two. Um, I mean, I think we all here know, for those of you that don't know, these two aren't best friends. They don't, uh, they don't hang out on weekends. They don't send each other birthday cards or Christmas presents. They are, uh, th these two have been competing since they both got into the, uh, into the sport. And there's no love lost between these two. Do you guys have any questions? I don't know if we're set up with that. If not, just stand up and shout it out to us. Or don't. No questions? They will after. <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't know that this was going to go on until um, I was on the plane on the way here. And um, I was actually kind of looking forward to going to Bulgaria and not seeing any of the season. So this has kind of sprung on me today. And, um, you know, it's just one of those days where I've been, like, flying all over and just got a headache. And it's just like, you know, it, it's uh, it, it, is, it is what it is, you know. So um, I'm anxious to see how it turns out. But, you know, um, uh, yeah, I can't be perfect every day, dude, just like you, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, Ariel. I told you guys today at the press conference, she's, uh, you know, she's still young. She's a young woman. She's got a lot on her plate. She's, uh, she's got a lot to do. So apparently this thing got sprung on her. But she's happy now. She's thrilled to be here. She's so pumped. <laughs> it yeah. got sprung on me, too. What the hell? <laughs> Rhonda, when do you fly to Bulgaria? On the 20th. And when does uh, Fast Furious 7 start? I don't know um, if that's for sure yet. Actually, Rhonda, it's Karen. I just wanted to ask you, you know, I know, like you're saying, you're anxious to see this. You've already been vocal about the fact that you've said, oh, I think people are going to think I'm crazy, you know, and you're, you're maybe worried about how it's going to come out. But at the same time, uh, shouldn't... Shouldn't you, both of you guys be psyched to own who you are and, and, you know, regardless of your emotional level or whatever, you know, you're still a great fighter and, and wouldn't both of you guys be psyched to, to show that element off and not, not worry about, you know, the other stuff? You, you know what? I, I don't want to talk for her or answer for her, but she can answer for herself. But you have to understand, you're, you're talking about two girls. The first time you ever do a reality show or something like The Ultimate Fighter where you go out, it's one thing to do an interview for a fight. You do an interview for a fight, and, you know, this is what I think. I'm, this is what I'm going to do to her. This is what I'm going to do to her. It, it's totally different than opening yourself up and living on camera for, uh, you know, for five or six weeks. And, and as you, you know, when you're caught up in the moment, you do things, and as you just reflect and think back on them, you're like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be on TV in front of the whole world. And it starts to freak you out. It's absolutely normal. It's happened many other times in seasons with the guys too. You know, it, it's 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 one hundred percent normal to feel this way before you're going to be on a television show for thirteen episodes. Yeah. So, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the question was for people to see who you are. How can people possibly know who you are from a couple clips of a video that people are seeing out of context? It's no way for anyone to get to know you. And so I'm just preparing for people to get a worse idea of who I am. With her comments the other day about retiring and everything else, these are the kinds of things I, I told you about that you, when you when you start to do so many interviews and, and all the things that are going on, it just starts to pile up on you after a while and you get to the point where, and that's why I was just telling her too, you know, we, we all have bad days. And when you know you got a bad day coming or you don't like what you, stay off, inter stay off the internet, don't get on Twitter, you know. And, and Rhonda has become one of the biggest stars not only in the UFC, but in, in sports in general right now, period. You know? And, and you have your days when, you know, the, the people who fight in the UFC are, are tough people. And, and, but you have your days where you don't want to get on the internet and to see people talk, you know, talking about how ugly you are, how this you are, how that you are. You know, you have your days when you don't want to see that shit. And uh, she's having one of those days today. Yeah. Misha, if you could just comment on the kind of a learning process it was for you. and. You know, did the did the process of having this be so emotional? Did it help you? Do you think before you actually go into just another fight, you know what I mean? Uh, it help you keep your emotions in check when you're actually walking down into the cage? Yeah, it's a hard thing to to really put in perspective yet. You know, I think I won't really be able to truly answer that until it happens. But um, I would like to think so. Um, you know, I, I feel differently going into this fight than I did the first time. You know, and um, that makes me feel just more confident because. You know, the first time wasn't wasn't it wasn't good for me. I, I was at at a spot too, you know, where I felt like I almost hated the sport. You know, there was a lot of really ruthless fans, and even some of the MMA coverage was it was rough. You know, and and you go through these ups and downs, and you know, everybody they see the glory of it, or it's easy as a fan to sit back and and be a couch spectator and say, oh, well, they should have done this, you should have done that, and they have an easy way to access this through social media. So it sucks when you get on your social media and you just, you're just you having a good day and someone ruins it by comments that they make or hundreds of thousands of comments that you read that are negative every day. And um, that's kind of where I was at with, with that point in my fight um, career, but I learned a lot from it. You know, I lost, but I came back and I'm still here. And then going on through this whole um, season was incredibly challenging. You know, it, it wasn't easy at all. And uh, having to keep my emotions in check and, and stay true to myself and, and try to stay happy and um, be there for the fighters regardless of how I was feeling personally and, and Rhonda and my you know disagreements and whatever we had so um, yeah I don't know I just I feel like I learned a lot and I think you guys will you'll pick up on that in the season cool well I'm looking forward to it thanks and um, with this season of the ultimate fighter especially in the women's uh, athletes it poses something interesting because after you two fight realistically the winner of the season could challenge for the title because there's a lot of experienced women already in there that have uh, very good records but they chose to try out and go through the ultimate fighter was that something that uh, Dana that you had to think about beforehand because you wouldn't want some sort of after they fight if the season oh no when they fight the season will have finished so we'll know who'll have won but is there any chance that the person who wins the season could be next in line no I, I mean Listen, coming off the Ultimate Fighter, no, no matter where you've been before, and you, uh, still coming to the UFC is, is, a, is a tough challenge. And, and they still got Kat Zagano out there who, who's healing up and, and getting healthy and, and other girls that are in line first. You don't just jump off the Ultimate Fighter and come right in and start fighting you know, the, the, the champion. Uh, the, the, there'd be some fights ahead of those girls before they'd get close to, to the champ. Just had two quick ones for Dana. Uh, Dana, you said Eric Shanks was critical of the Ultimate Fighter. What in particular has he been critical about in the past that is different this time around? Well, I, I think that some of the things he was critical about were, were the production. He wanted to see some changes in the production, some some things that could be uh, could be tightened up, and that, that's what you saw. I, I've said that before. Uh, the changes that everybody loved uh, last season were, were Eric Shanks' changes. Are there more for this one? No. No, it'll look like it looked last season. And the roster uh, of the, even like the fights going into the house, everything was released today. And it's very clear when looking at it, a lot of the female fighters are, are very familiar names, experienced names, and some of the, the, the bantamweights are, there are a couple, but less known. Did you notice a difference in talent between the female and the men? Well, the first, well, 
yeah, uh, the first thing I told these guys is uh, you, uh, I told the men, you know, the women, the women have been outshining the men in the UFC. You guys, you know, you're not fighting the women, but you're competing against them for sure. The, uh, the, the guys, it was a great season. There's, there's good fights. There's good talent. Um, the, the women did great, and, and, so, and so did the men. I'm, re I'm really happy with, with the level of talent that we got this season and, um, and, and the fights themselves. Thanks. Thank you. For Misha and Rhonda, when something happens in the house, do you have any idea from production if they're going to include it or not? Did, are you privy to anything about how they're going to use what happens? No, they, um, they take a lot, a lot of footage, and we have no say over what's used or how it's portrayed. Yeah, I mean, we pretty much, we sign the agreement, and, you know, we're well aware that anything we say and do can and probably will be held against us, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean that's that's the idea of a reality show. You know that they're they're going to highlight what they want to you know what they want to highlight, and um, yeah. So I mean, just go in there and don't really have any idea what to expect. They think that's why I can say that I'm a little bit nervous. You know, I, I really have no idea what to expect. Even understanding that, was there anything that happened where you still went to producers and said, "Please, don't use that." No. No, there's, there's not anything. I mean, there's probably things that maybe looking back on it, you know, I wish I would have done differently or said or whatever, you know, but that's the point, you know, we're, we're not perfect um, and that's okay. You know, everyone's going to make mistakes and if someone wants to point the finger at me, there's three pointing back at them. So, um, yeah, you know, um, I don't think that I did anything horrific on the show that I needed to go beg the producers to remove, you know, I just tried to stay true to myself and yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, there, there was only one thing I, I asked them not to show, and it wasn't even anything major. It was just um, we're mic'd all the time, and I, I don't like anyone ever seeing that. Uh, you know, me and all my coaches were not. You know, we we disagree sometimes, and we don't always see the same light. But I think to to everybody else, it needs to look like we're always a united front. And so, and um, I I just uh, I disagreed with something that one of my coaches said. And um, I, I asked them to not play anything that would like have me saying anything that would contradict any of my coaches. And that was it. Last question for, for Dana. Dana, have you ever considered having announcing for the fights on Tough? Why is it always just the, the live atmosphere sound? I don't know. That, that's how we started the show, and, and we kind of liked it. It almost feels like, you know, because it's a reality show, we're all flies on the wall, you know, for this thing, and uh, we just thought it has a better feel to it. It's not a sporting event. It's not. It's not like a, a fight night or or a, or a pay per view. These these guys aren't UFC fighters. They want to be in the UFC, so they're just. We walk out and we fight. That's it. That makes sense. Then, uh, with all the what that happened in this season, uh, I'm gonna ask you. Uh, do you think that we are going to see female fighters in future uh, seasons of the Ultimate Fighter? See male fighters what? Female fighters in the next, uh, in the f future, uh, in the seasons of the Ultimate Fighter in the future? Yeah, using females. Oh, will there be, an yeah. Yeah, there'll Sorry. be another, w definitely. Definitely, you know, j just like when, when we do a different season um, and we'll do, 170 pounders, 185 pounders, light heavyweights or heavyweights. You know, it's been a long time since we've done a heavyweight season because um, there aren't that many heavyweights out there. So it'll depend on how much talent there is for the 135 pound women. If there's a lot of talent out there, we'll do it again. These bright lights make you feel like you're getting interrogated. Yeah, I it know. Makes yeah. You feel like that too. Yeah, we can't see anybody. <laughs> we can just hear. Voices coming at you. Yeah. Uh, Rhonda, you've said um, before that you thought when Misha walked through the door in the gym that you were going to be replaced as a coach. I don't. I still don't understand why you felt that way. What were the circumstances that made you think that they were going to replace you of all people? Um, I. It was from a series of rushed decisions and miscommunications between me, my manager, my lawyer, and the UFC. And um, 
I totally own all the fault, um, uh, like everything that went wrong. And um, yeah, they they were they were upset and uh, said they 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 threatened to throw me off the show. And um, yeah, I thought everything was cleared <laughs> up and they cool. they being me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the last thing I heard was I don't know what we're going to do. And then I got there, and uh, Misha walked into the door, and uh, that my, was my first assumption was that's was the most uh, clever way to uh, replace me and defame me as possible. So that's what I thought initially. So her lawyer, her Hollywood lawyer, was being a typical Hollywood scumbag, and he called my office and. Uh, at like five o'clock or six o'clock on a Friday night when the girls were arriving on Sunday to start shooting and uh, and I flipped out <clears throat> and by the time her and I finally talked um, you know I was mad I was yelling I was screaming typical me and uh, we had resolved the issue, her and I did, and then when she showed up on the show, we didn't tell her that Kat Zingano blew her knee out. So when you walked into the gym, you walked into the place, Kat Zingano's picture is still hanging on the wall, you know, she thinks Kat Zingano, so we always have, you know, once she bumped into her, I was like, what are you doing here? Well, I'm here to coach. I mean, assistant coach, now I'm here to coach, and she flipped out and thought that I brought her out to kick her off the show, I would, for, which I would never do in a million years, I, obviously, you know, but she, that was what popped into her head. I thought she was just upset because she saw Misha. And then once I realized what, what she was so pissed about, we, uh, I told them that Kat was hurt, then she, she calmed down and got it. So that's why, that's why it was a little confusing when she said, in the first media, uh, the media day that we had for Tough, she was saying, I thought I was getting kicked off the show. So that's the story. For Dana, I'm wondering if the uh, influx of women fighters has opened up any potential for new sponsors, uh, especially ones that are more attracted to female athletes. That's a good question. Um, you know, we, we couldn't have a bigger female star right now than Rhonda and obviously a lot of sponsors are, are attracted to her um, nothing uh, no sponsors that would be female and not male you know uh, she's done some great stuff for Metro and and a lot of other people but n not 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 uh, not anything that wouldn't that you wouldn't be able to sponsor a man with we're not selling tampons yet all right uh, my question is uh, just two questions. First one for Misha. Rhonda said she wouldn't want to ever do this again. Uh, how did you feel after this experience, and would you be open to this if the coaching opportunity came out again? Honestly, I think that one time was enough. <laughs> um, I mean, if it was exactly the same, you know, with Rhonda and I, I would definitely say no. You know, it was emotionally taxing and was challenging. Um, you know, but, but the fighters themselves, my team, definitely made it worth it. So I do have a very heavy appreciation for even the opportunity of being there. So, you know, it's not something that I want to bag on or, you know what I mean? It, I don't feel that way, but from the emotional standpoint, it was just really hard. And um, so with that, I wouldn't want to do it again. But um, if it was maybe coaching against someone else, then yeah, absolutely. The experience yeah, um, as a whole was definitely positive. And one for Rhonda, just curious if you brought in Jean LaBelle at all during the season for uh any day of training. If I did, why would I tell you? Just as a tease, I guess. Are you calling me a tease? No, I said just uh, that you would give us a tease that we might see Jean LaBelle, but I will uh, refrain from my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's in a mood today, boys and girls. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things, like what Misha just said, it, it's one of the things that I love the most about The Ultimate Fighter is everybody, everybody who's seen it, everybody goes in with their, you know, you know, the, oh, this, uh, this is nothing, this is da, da, da. I can't tell you guys how mentally, emotionally, and just physically demanding this show is on, on everybody, not just uh, 
the talent that goes in, but the coaches and everybody. It's, it's, what, it's what I love the most about the show. It really, it, it really, uh, it pushes people, especially the, the talent, pushes them to another level. The, the, the people who make it through this thing and, and, uh, and of course, the guy who wins really does have a good shot in the UFC because it, it, you, couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't set up media training better for them. Cameras are in their face 24-7. Um, you couldn't uh, put more pressure on somebody. You couldn't, you know, like when you have to you get called late for a fight. I mean, these guys have to fight and cut weight over and over and over again. It's just you can't under, understand how tough it is until you're there doing it. You know, I've been doing this thing for 19 seasons now or however many seasons we're on, and I've been doing it since day one, and I get to go home and leave you know, it's I'm not as big a part of it as everybody else is, and it's hard on me. So, it's it's awesome. I, I love this. Uh, I love this competition. We good? Yes. You want to start this thing? Yeah. Yeah. No more questions. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks for coming. On this season of the Ultimate Fighter. I'm here to coach. You're here to coach? For some reason, fate has intertwined the two of us. Where is he at? Me and Misha were meant to be rivals. Or they say she's here. here to coach. This is a monumental season, you know. For the first time ever, women will be competing on the Ultimate Fighter. And not only that, but we're doing 135-pound women and 135-pound men. Six o'clock, you know the schedule. Ron is kind of... Sour pants a lot. She's gonna pay for every smile she smirks today. This will be the biggest coach rivalry ever in the history of the UFC. Great fight. Uh, well, obviously, both of you had your concerns about how you were going to come off. Uh, you know, this episode was more about the uh, the other fighters than yourselves. But after watching the first episode, did it alleviate some of the fears, or how do you feel right now? If we start with uh, Rhonda, please. Oh, I wasn't really worried about the first episode. No, uh, I mean, I was I'm, I was really uh, stoked about how it came out. I mean, they definitely did a really good job, and I, I like the the new format that they started doing, like starting the the last season and. Uh, yeah, I, I miss my babies. <laughs> that was the only thing. I was like, oh, I see them come on the this, on this screen. I, I miss them. I do. And uh, that, that was the best part about the whole thing was just being able to really develop those relationships with them. And, uh, yeah, it's, I, miss them. I miss them a lot. Let me see your thoughts. Uh, I thought it was freaking awesome. Um, the whole thing, that whole episode, I couldn't look away, and uh, I thought it was great. And I thought that they did a great job highlighting what they needed to highlight, and it was awesome. I'm, I'm more curious to know what you guys think. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I was impressed. I think it was very entertaining, by the way. But um, one question also, Ron, if you could say the uh, the matchup, the first matchup that you picked there, can you share what uh, kind of what the conversation was? Obviously, you got put on the spot very quickly. Um, you know, went for a number one versus a number one. Do you remember what the thought process was in that quick little conversation, what the discussion was with the team and how that decision went down? Um, not exactly. Um, I, I just remember that um, when uh, they, they didn't show this, but backstage Juliana was asking to be removed from our corner and put into Misha's. So, um, so uh, even though I thought she was an amazing fighter, I, um, I, I put her at the last on the list because I, I doubted uh, her loyalties, so. And then um, even though she, she would like came to me later and was asking to be on my team, like she would kind of flip flop back and forth. And um, so I was just like, okay, um, these things I think are sometimes, these little hints and factors are sometimes more important than actual skill sets. So, um, I, and I, I always, I still think that uh, that Shane is amazing, and um, I I have so much faith in her, and so I thought, hey, if you want to be the best in the world, you got to be the best in the world against everybody in this house on any day. And I thought because she had the most experience, that she would be the most ready to pick up the fight at any time. And um, just 
two quick questions. One is about actually the attire, because the the unified rules of mixed martial arts weren't written when there was female MMA competitors, and some were wearing rash gar guards and some were not. Um, what is your opinion? Does it give a fighter an advantage if they're wearing a rash guard, and why aren't uh, the fighters are just told you have to wear either a sports bra or a rash guard, or what's the difference? Um, I, I think probably, I mean, I, I don't really wear that much when I'm competing. Um, mostly because I'm a grappler, so I like, like, if I'm, the, m the more slick I am, the faster my transitions go. That's why I kind of, like, giggle to myself whenever my opponents try greasing or I try putting a lot of lotion on, because um, that actually helps me out. So I think um, if you like to have more friction, uh, having more clothes is better. If you like to have less friction, then less is better. And finally, when you saw some fighters there that uh, boring wins and ground, ground out victories, are you less inclined to pick them on your team? And was there any fighter there that you thought lost a fight that maybe should have got into the house had he been matched, had he or she been matched up with a different opponent? Um, I thought uh, Colleen and Sheena was a really unwise first choice. I thought uh, Colleen was one of the best girls that tried out for the show. And so um, I would like to see her matched up differently. Um, I also think that um, uh, having Jessica and um, the other girl, she was a sweetheart, but um, they had such similar backgrounds. It would have been um, more interesting if they were matched up against different styled fighters instead of, you know, a boxer against a boxer. Um, but I thought all the fights were pretty fairly officiated. You know, there wasn't really any fights, so I thought it was, like, really unfair. Um, there were a couple matchups I thought weren't so wise, but the fights themselves I thought were fair. Hi, Misha. Um, just curious, you had the first picks. Um, can you, would you mind walking us through kind of like your thought process on why Juliana was your first pick? Like, did you know as soon as she fought, like, hey, that's my pick if I, if I get first pick and the same with Bollinger? Yeah, you know, I thought Juliana um, was is kind of like a rosebud waiting to bloom, you know. And um, I've trained with her, and I know that she doesn't have, you know, didn't have a big name prior to this, but um, she's one of the toughest girls that I've ever, ever trained with, and um, one of the toughest girls I've ever seen fight. She's pretty amazing. And so, you know, I just kind of put my faith in that, that she was really going to rise to the occasion. And uh, although I grew up, you know, grew up in this sport, idolizing Shayna, you know, she was definitely one of my idols, and I still think she's one of the best fighters in the world, but, um, you know, my decision, it, it was like I said, you know, it's like, man, they're both great girls, but I just had to go with my gut instinct. And um, the same with, um, I'm sorry, Bollinger? Yeah, you know, I was just impressed with him. I, I didn't know anything about, you know, I, I mean, actually, a lot of the guys I, I didn't know much about, and um, so I really just had to kind of go off of that one fight, Whereas the girls, a lot of them, I had followed their careers. So with him, um, I just liked what I saw. He looked very well-rounded. He looked crisp in, in, in his stand-up and striking and also had great wrestling, you know. And I think that the few submissions that he got caught in, you have to take into account that he got out of them. And he was going against one of the, you know, arguably one of the best jujitsu players that came into there. So I thought he was good. Misha, I was wondering when Rhonda, well, when you walk into the gym and they make the announcement that you're going to be the coach, it seemed like you weren't comfortable telling Rhonda why you were there. You told her to go to Dana. Was that something that you were, you were told to send Rhonda to Dana, or did you just not want to explain it? No, it was something that was discussed before, you know. Um, I think it made for a better lead up, you know, kind of that curiosity. And so I just, you know, I, I agreed that that's what we were going to kind of do. And so I just walked in there. I didn't want to give it all away. You know, I wanted to see the full reaction. Rhonda, having heard your response earlier to what that whole dynamic was like, it seemed like that kind of maybe needlessly stressed you out, you know, like that somehow that could have been told to you straight up. Yeah, it kind of set the tone for the whole series where they would purposely go out of their way to manipulate me to be, make me react as dramatically as possible, and which is probably one of the reasons why I walked away from the whole experience with a pretty sour taste in my mouth was they didn't really care about um, making it easy on us. It, they cared about making it entertaining on everybody else. And so um, 
uh, it was, but it was nice to know off, right off the bat what their priorities were, and it definitely wasn't us. I also noticed that at ringside during the fights, you were very talkative with Dana, breaking down things as it went, making commentary. Rhonda, you didn't really seem to say much. Uh, they didn't show you saying much at all about the fights or the fighters to Dana. What was your state of mind then? Were you just not interested in doing that? What was the deal? I was there to watch fights and pay attention. I wasn't there to kiss ass. Thank you. Rhonda, you go back with Manny Gambirian for quite a while, and obviously he's part of your staff for, the, for this season. He went through the process of being an Ultimate Fighter house and the whole pressure cooker, and I'm wondering how much you leaned on him uh, even before the, the taping to ask him about the whole process for yourself as a coach and also kind of getting the insight into the mind of, of fighters going through it as well. Yeah, that's a, large, a big reason why I asked him to be my assistant coach um, was because he'd been through it before and he knew a lot more about the process and how the fighters would be feeling and um, also the fighters were able to relate to him a lot more and bond with him more because he'd been through it too. And um, yeah, he was absolutely instrumental to have around, you know, not for just for information, but for morale. Um, you know, I'm, the only reason I'm here is for Manny. I didn't even know about this. And I didn't even, I, I'm leaving for Bulgaria on the 20th, you know. I didn't want to come to this at all. But Manny did this for me. And it, he was there for a whole month and it wasn't easy on anyone. And so, you know, he was there for me. I love him to death. I'm here for him, regardless of if it's convenient for me or not. Actually, I'm going to pick up a little bit on the Manny stuff, Rhonda. Um, you know, you mentioned before the screening that there was one point when you disagreed, you know, with Edmund and, the, and your team, and you didn't want that shown. I'm just curious with the process of picking the guys. Um, how much more did your opinion weigh, you know, you know, when you were picking the team? Was there anybody that you thought you saw something special in where the other guys didn't agree with you, you know, that that would be a good choice? Um, no, we, we all had uh, different ideas, and we both, we, I, mean, we all, I mean, all of us, really, uh, it just, uh, we put all the cards out and we put them um, in order of what we thought and we kind of shuffled them around and we argued our points and we had a discussion and um, it's pretty much, it wasn't like, I'm the boss, this is the way it's going to go. I mean, it was always, in our, in our camp, there's no silent problems. Everything has to be discussed and everything has to be agreed upon. And so um, we, we all agreed upon the, the picks that we had uh, by the end of it, and um, of course, with with Misha having the the first pick, we had to kind of you know cross out whatever she picked first, and um, uh, and adapt to that. But um, no, we we there's no superiors or anything like that. We're we're a team and we're a unit, and we decide and move like that. And so if there's ever a time that like you know I'm mic'd and I have to say to one coach like, hey, so and so said this at the wrong time you need to talk to this person and tell them not to say that um that's the kind of stuff i don't want being shown that we ever disagree you know it's just uh we want to always be a united front to everybody else and all of our disagreements are internal and solved internally okay and for you thank you and for you misha um I'm blanking on his name right now, but he's the one at the end who said he'd never even heard of you, didn't care if you picked him last, didn't know who you were, whatever, whatever. How do you feel when you hear that? Did, you know, is that the first time you've heard that? And also, were there, were there incidents that you felt uh, maybe not enough respect from, from some gentlemen on the team? No, you know, um, Tim is a really, really interesting character, and um, he actually told me that to my face. He's like, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> like, I don't follow MMA at all. I don't watch it, he said, so it's, it wasn't just me or because I'm a woman. I didn't take a personal offense. He just is there, very there in the moment, and he he's just his own self. He's his own fighter, and um, he's very ADD, and... Um, you know, a very lovable guy, but a very odd character, and so um, I didn't take offense to it, you know, he just, he was there to do his own thing, and he just doesn't really follow MMA, period, outside of his own, his own goals. Thanks. Question for Rhonda. Uh, do you feel like this would have been a more enjoyable experience if Kat was the opposing coach? Um, it probably would have, uh, been uh, less stressful, but, um, 
it probably wouldn't have been as entertaining or, you know, give you as much to write about. So I'm sure you're very happy about that. Me in particular? No. Um, for Misha, <laughs> you've had your uh, back and forth with uh, Tara La Rosa, um, and I think that she was, you know, obviously one of the, the, the more well-known fighters who tried out, and I think it will be news that she didn't make the show. Because of your previous history with her, were you happy that she didn't make the house? You know, Tara and I have a long history, and um, actually, before she went out to fight, she was warming up in my locker room, and um, coached by my coaching staff. And um, I just decided at that point that if I were in her shoes, I would know that I would be really uncomfortable, and you know, I probably wouldn't feel like I would be able to perform my best in those situations. And so you know, kind of my respect for her as a fighter kind of came in, and I set the personal issues aside, and I came up to her, and I, s I squashed the beef as best as I could. I just said, hey, you know, I know we've had our differences, but I just want you to know that, you know, I wish you all the best in this fight, and if you win and you do end up on my team, there's not going to be any problems on my end, you know, and um, she just kind of was like, okay, you know, kind of caught her off guard, and then I just let her go about her business and warm up, and um, yeah, that was how that went, and she didn't win, so it wasn't any issue. Did you say anything to her afterwards? I didn't, no. Thanks. Any other questions? No? One more? Yeah, right there. Uh, for either of you guys, did you feel like anybody on your teams or on the posing teams um, was there more to be on television than to be a fighter? I don't really understand the question. Like, m more like kind of mugging for the cameras and, and acting as opposed to training hard. That We've seen that in prior seasons of Tough. I don't know if you picked up on that at all. I think um, I will have to watch that really to see because we're not there for their one-on-one -on -one interviews. You know what I mean? So um, I was actually a little bit, a little bit surprised um, by by the way that Louis came off, just, uh, he came off very, like you said, arrogant. And, um, you know, he's actually a really, really nice guy. So I wasn't sure if uh, that was, you know, just part of his his TV persona. Um, that was a little surprising to me. So, you know, I, I don't know. There's probably a, more surprises to come. But like I said, I don't, I haven't seen their one-on-one -on -one interviews, so I can't really say. Um, nothing from the interviews really surprised me too much. Uh, I actually thought the dynamic between Louie and his father was hilarious. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, that surprised me a lot. I wouldn't have guessed that about him. Um, I think the thing that surprised me the most was the, the family dynamic and the motivations and, the, and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I just like to see some of them talk about their kids and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I I remember like sitting in the in the locker room, it was like it was like the day after the picks happened, and we were like not supposed to talk to each other because we weren't on camera, and uh, we were like doing like just the media stuff and taking the pictures. And I was sitting there with uh, Wooten and Beal, and I was like, I, I was purposely trying to interact with them when the cameras weren't around, you know, and trying to like have real conversations with them when the cameras weren't around, much to the production's dismay, just because I wanted them to know that. I was talking to them and I was really speaking to them just for them and not for the show. And uh, I was sitting there in the locker room with them and I was like, um, actually I, I took my phone out and I was like, okay, you're not allowed to film anything when I'm filming this right now. And I was like, you're gonna look back at this video and you're gonna think, oh, the things I was thinking this day and the worries that I had back then and oh, what a lad I was. I was trying to do my terrible English accent for Wooten. And then Chris was like all shy and not saying anything yet. And they were just like kind of like giggly and nervous. And I was just trying to like break them down and get them to relax. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but they're, they're so cute. I miss them, <laughs> I miss them a lot. I do, um, but we good. Thank God for group text because <laughs> I have my whole team on group text, and we're constantly always like you know doing like the team text thing now. Um, I'm sure Misha will start doing that tomorrow. <laughs>